Hi guys, it's the 16th of February uh, 2013 and I'm just uh, running a, a retrial on uh, this uh, cell. And you see I've got the temperature there as 9.9, uh, .9, just coming up to 10. I've got 5 volts and 196.8 um, milliamps. And um, I'm just planning to take uh, readings at um, every degree or every half degree and what I'm doing I'm taking the uh, the voltage and uh, current readings and calculating the resistance as if you just try and take a resistance reading of the cell um, you get uh, er erroneous readings as the, the cell uh, starts to look capacitive and the meters do funny things so that's the story so far, just coming up to 10 degrees. I'm uh, about halfway into the trial now. Um, when I started, you see, uh, I got 8 degrees there, and I took a reading, and it's 5 volts, and I took the current reading there. And uh, then, still at 8 degrees and 5 volts, the current had changed, and then again it had changed and uh, well that's odd and then I got up to uh, 9 degrees and I took a reading and then another reading and then uh, I realized what I was doing in fact was um, on the instrument uh, I've got two options I can have decimal point or whole numbers and I'd got it there so I was reading 8 degrees 9 degrees whereas I should have been reading uh, the uh, eight point uh, one, two, three, etc. Um, and oh, I tell you, the, the problem with a, an inquisitive mind is you know, you, you get all these sort of setbacks. But I shall have to uh, chill this thing down again because look at, um, at the first eight degree reading, which let's call it eight degrees, the resistance calculates to 34. 0.4 ohms and then um, still within the same sort of uh, temperature of 8 degrees it could have been 8.4 or something like that 8.5 but the resistance there changed to um, 26.1 uh, ohms so it's as though there's quite a sharp curve at this low temperature so I shall have to revisit that um, I say we um, the trouble with an inquisitive mind is uh, every question you answer it, it, it begs several more uh, questions. By the way I didn't say that uh, to get this temperature rise uh, all I'm doing is relying on the uh, the uh, wattage uh, lost in the cell so from its resistive losses uh, it's just uh, slightly warming the cell and um, that's how I'm uh, climbing up in temperature. Well, I tell you, this uh, bucket of water keeps on getting more complicated. Remember I showed you this graph, and uh, this shows the cell's resistance on the left-hand side there, and that's calculated by dividing the uh, voltage across the cell uh, by the current uh, going into the cell and then um, as I increase the voltage so you could see the resistance dropped quite dramatically and um, that's uh, a test I did um, a, a few weeks ago. Now this graph is produced from data that I've gathered today and uh, again on the uh, x-axis I've got uh, the temperature in degrees centigrade and that starts at uh, 9.5 degrees and then each of those little brown blobs is uh, half a degree so the first one is 9.5 then 10, 10.5, 11 degrees and so on uh, across the uh, screen the resistance on the uh, y-axis on the left there 
is calculated from the volts divided by the current into the cell. So what I've done is kept a constant 5 volts on this cell and then um, just as the cell is warmed up from its own uh, I squared R losses or watts uh, loss into the cell so it's warmed up and you'll see it looks like a fairly linear line um, down to about um, 15 um, between well, about, uh, 16 and a half uh, degrees and uh, I actually stopped the test and um, then went back to it and um, I had to warm it up a little bit um, uh, and uh, the results are a little bit uh, non-linear but uh, I think you can see the general trend is um, the resistance is, is going downhill as the temperature increases. Now obviously this is only over the range of um, nine and a half uh, to um, twenty two and a half degrees centigrade so I, I will cover a, a broader range in um, some coarser steps. So I guess the question has got to be um, is the uh, earlier graph that I produced showing the cell resistance uh, against DC volts um, has that been influenced by the temperature during the test because I didn't monitor the test for that. Um, so say um, uh, the trouble with this blessed project is <laughs> every time I think I've got an answer for something um, it begs more questions. Um, I haven't really got any good way of stabilizing the temperature uh, so I may just have to do some um, quick fire checks at uh, different volts and, and revisit the um, uh, that earlier uh, cell resistance chart. But anyway, that's that's where I've got to so far, and uh, this is before I start looking at um, adding any uh, sort of uh, catalyst or changing the spacing between the uh, <laughs> flipping plates of this thing. Um, uh, and uh, as you know, I uh, I really want to start looking at um, uh, hitting the cell with uh, some sort of variable frequency either hitting it at resonance uh, um, but uh, anyway all of this is just background information and uh, like I always thought a bucket of water is a bucket of worms it's uh, it's always more complicated than you think and uh, I guess to an electrochemist this is just bread and butter and uh, they're probably laughing at me but anyway I'm having a bit of fun um, uh, along the way and um, I'll say uh, well I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching guys bye bye